morning, Mies Sherman. Happy Tuesday to you. I hope you had a great start to your week. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Good morning, Nystrom community. I have a very cool and quick announcement. I would love for you to please save a special date next Tuesday, March 16th, to participate in a school-wide assembly that will kick off the Kids Heart Challenge. There are two small requests I have for you. The first one is please wear red. Red is the official color of the challenge and the American Heart Association. The second thing I'd love for you to do is to please continue to check Class Dojo, Seesaw, and Google Classroom for announcements on how to register and participate in this event. The event will be from March 16th to March 30th and will include lots of prizes, including the opportunity for a chance to slime the science teacher. Miss Rowan just hijacked our announcements, but that was definitely important news. So now you know, next Tuesday, American Heart Association, wear red for our assembly to kick off the Heart Challenge. Okay, now back to what I was trying to say before. It is Women's History Month, and did you know that we have a huge piece of women's history right here in Richmond? Just down the street from us, actually. And some of you may have even been there before. The Rosie the Riveter Museum. So check this out and learn a little bit about women's history rooted right here in Richmond. When the United States entered World War II, life changed quickly. The country needed the factories to help produce supplies for the war. Automobile and appliance factories were quickly turned into airplane and weapon factories and new factories were built to produce more materials. There was a problem though. All the men went off to war. Suddenly, there were no workers to run the factories. Women stepped up to the call and went to work for wartime industries including shipyards, steel mills, foundries, lumber mills, warehouses, offices, hospitals, and daycare centers. They were welders, drafters, truck drivers, riveters, and more. Wartime efforts were needed to make World War II a success. In 1942, a song called Rosie the Riveter became popular and provided the nickname for these female workers. An image of Rosie the Riveter was created to advertise that women were needed in the factories. Rosie was a beautiful, strong woman. She was capable of doing anything she set her mind to. These advertisements were convincing and thousands of women joined the war effort. Rosie the Riveter continues to be a symbol of feminism and women being capable of anything a man can now do. Now that we learned a little bit about the history of the Rosies, meaning the women who worked in the factories in World War II, let's learn a little bit about the Rosie the Riveter Museum and why it's located here in Richmond. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. On the morning of December 7, 1941, the Empire of Japan attacked the United States Naval Fleet at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Following this date, which will live in infamy, the United States declared war on Japan. A few days later, their ally Germany declared war on the United States. America had officially entered World War II. While an unprecedented number of young American men would serve in World War II, the country would also need to drastically increase its factory production on the home front, making supplies not only for our armed forces, but for our allies. This effort would be referred to by President Franklin Roosevelt as the Arsenal of Democracy. This demand for the tools of war famously opened up new opportunities for women and minority groups. During World War II, six million women entered the workforce for the first time. The iconic Rosie the Riveter and her We Can Do It motto came to symbolize all women home front workers. Rosie the Riveter World War II Homefront National Historical Park was established in Richmond, California in the year 2000. While the work of the Rosies was done all across America, the Kaiser shipyards in Richmond and many of the neighboring factories still remain, 
so it was an ideal location to preserve and interpret the legacy of those who supplied the nation with munitions and machinery. During the war, the Kaiser shipyards produced 747 ships, making it the most productive shipyard in history. Working conditions on the home front were difficult and dangerous. The high number of industrial casualties would lead to improved workplace safety and regulations, as well as better access to affordable health care. Another challenge faced by working women on the home front was child care, as mothers comprised a significant portion of the workforce. This led to the establishment of child development centers and the professional field of early childhood development. Women and minorities were as essential to the Allied triumph over the Axis powers as American military personnel. This wartime influence would have a profound impact on the civil rights movement and women's rights movement during the following decades. Rosie the Riveter World War II Homefront National Historical Park is a partnership park, meaning that no land or buildings are actually owned by the National Park Service. Many of the structures remain active production facilities or have been restored with exhibits or new businesses. Today, visitors can experience the park through ranger-led interpretive tours at the visitor center or by exploring the separated sections of the shipyard. Next door to the visitor center is the massive Ford assembly plant, where tanks, half-tracks, and armored cars receive their finishing touches before being sent overseas. Several other structures connected to the park that are worth visiting are the historic shops and warehouses at shipyard number three, the SS Red Oak Victory, the last surviving ship built in the Kaiser shipyards, and the Rosie the Riveter Memorial, which consists of a granite walkway etched with major events from the war that leads you through a large sculpture reminiscent of the ships assembled by the shipyard workers. Of the over 400 National Park Service sites, Rosie the Riveter is one of only eight dedicated primarily to women. 2020 marks both the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II and the 100th anniversary of women gaining the legal right to vote in America. While progress can often be slow, it's important to reflect on how this progress has been achieved and how much further there is to go. We had a very successful day on the Riddle front on Monday. You guys started the week super strong. What building has the most stories? The answer is a riddle. Get it? Not like stories going up high, but stories as in books. So Mr. Z, Miss Ibilola, Miss Schultz, Miss Pierce, Miss Heller, Miss Franco, Miss Fairweather, Miss B, Miss Barba, Mr. LaFleur, Miss Lydia, Miss Chang, Mr. Luck, Miss Massa, and Miss Etchy. Wow, that's a lot of people. Congratulations. Now, let's look at today's riddle. So in honor of the heart, Healthy Heart Challenge coming up, what has 13 hearts but no organs? You know, got to keep your heart healthy. All right, look forward to hearing your answers tomorrow. That is it for today. Remember those four Bs. Be responsible, be respectful, be safe, and be honest. Have a great day or not. The choice is yours.